Are we good back here? All right. Thank you, Mr. Eric. All right. Everybody blessed today? Amen. 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 We're glad to be here. I'm going to uh, <clears throat> kick it off by singing a song. How many of you would would uh, rather I didn't sing? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> At least, at least you're honest, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say you're honest, and you got some sense, amen? <laughs> you don't want me to be doing no singing, amen? Hey, we're we're rolling with a skeleton crew today. Uh, none of the band is here, so I'm going to bless you with not singing. Uh, man, when I got here about 10 o'clock, I realized Cody was out of pocket. He's on his way, so we got the soundboard working, got the uh Computer turned on and the camera. So when anytime that I'm involved and get all the electronics working, God is moving in church already. Can I get a good amen? Now I had to get on the phone and make a few calls, <laughs> but we, we got it done. So we uh, we're gonna run over some announcements and by the grace of God, I am not gonna sing. We miss our band, but we're we're praying for them all to get well and healthy. And, uh, we're going to carry on. I'm just thankful that God's Word prevails. Amen? Amen. Uh, we'll run over some quick announcements. Uh, bulletins. I don't know if Miss Jamie had a bulletin today. We didn't have one today, did we? Oh, do we have one? Make sure and get one. I need to get one myself. Uh, <clears throat> gives you an idea of what's going on with the church. Uh, communication cards. Thank you, my brother. I was telling Ryan, I said, me turning all that soundboard, getting it all working, getting the computer and the live feed working is about like me playing the steel guitar, but hey, we, we got it done, amen, so, amen. Let's see, if you open up your bulletin though, in the middle there, you'll find out some things that are that are going on, isn't a whole lot going on, not a ton of announcements right now, with everything going on, but keep, uh, keep up with your bulletin, communication cards and the yellow communication card in the seats in front of you. If you uh, have a need or uh, have a prayer request, you put fill that thing out, put it in the wooden churches in the back or in the doors as you leave the, uh, the little, we got some tin cans for the communication cards. If you are a first time visitor today, raise your hand. Let me know if this is your first time to attend. Amen. Let's give our visitors a hand clap. I'm going to try that again. If you are a first time visitor, we have a, a gift for you with $500 cash in there. Now, how many visitors we got here? <laughs> right. You know, it's been a while. All right. <laughs> DJ, everybody, we got our hands up. But uh, if you are a visitor, we want to say welcome to Jasper County Cowboy Church. And uh, if you don't have a church on, we say welcome home. Uh, it has been some crazy times this, this last year. But I, in a lot of ways, we have broadened our tent stakes, so to speak. A lot of people are watching us live. Uh, we do little live videos around the house pretty often. And it's funny, I'll we'll see people on there and they'll say, you know, we're going to come join y'all soon. We live here or there. And so hopefully, uh, you know, even in the midst of some challenging times, we believe the gospel should be spread further and faster than ever before. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ never changes. He is our rock. And He is our solid foundation. And aren't you thankful that He's always there for us? No matter what's going on, He has us in the palm of His hand. Can I get a good amen on that? Amen. All right. So, uh, didn't mean to preach a little bit, but just wanted to welcome. We, we're pretty cool to have a couple of visitors this morning. I mean, we just want you to know we're, we're glad that you're a part of our church. And our church is, is growing in a lot of ways. Uh, we, we reach a lot of people through Facebook Live as well. We appreciate them. Uh, run down some quick announcements. Not ha we don't really have a whole lot today. We're kind of holding off on smaller meetings and small groups like Sunday school, the buckaroo going upstairs in the nursery right now. We'll know more after the first year to keep you going on that. We just want to make sure we uh, lift up everybody that is battling any complications. I see Mr. Mike back there. Any word on Ted today? He's still holding his own. All right. Yeah. Kind of about the same. He about the same. Done a little better yesterday. It looked like he was moving around in the bed on his own or helping him reposition yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Ted, he's tough for woodpecker lips. He's he's tough, but he is in Conroe and in ICU, so we're praying for him. Miss Ann. We talked to Miss Ann last night. I actually talked to her on the way to church this morning. She sounds like she's doing doing better. So we appreciate your prayers. All those I've, I've Tried to check on everybody I know that has been sick. And so far, 
Uh, Mr. Ted is, is had the biggest battle, but he's 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 fighting it through, and pulling it, and uh, we're, he's going to beat this thing. And uh, a lot a lot a lot of our people are 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 doing doing pretty good. So we're going to get this in a review mirror by the power of prayer. Amen. 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 So be in prayer for those that are sick. I mean, we all know that. It is kind of rare to see it up here lately, but I'm thankful that the Lord is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. I think that's all of our announcements. Uh, as far as giving, make sure I know uh, a lot of people have contacted me about not being here in person. How could they, you know, continue to give to the church and support the church, which that's very important. But if you want to, you can go to jc3texas.com and give online. You can call the church office. Miss Jamie's here. Uh, Monday through Friday, so give her a call, whatever you need to do to make sure. Uh, I'm just thankful that people care about supporting our church, and if God has been so faithful, even in this crazy year, God has been faithful. Aren't you thankful that God's faithful in all kinds of ways? He's faithful to watch over us and take care of us, and, and uh, He's thankful and faithful to meet our needs. So you can do it by mail, call the church office. Either way, I think that is all of our announcements. We're not going to have a long service without any singing today, Mike. You don't want to hit us one back there just like Capella, do you? Hey, brother, I'm good with whatever you want to do. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you welcome to sing one if you want one. Probably didn't bring your guitar, though, did you? Left it at home. <laughs> That's right. I tell you what, if I played the guitar and you could still sing on key, you'd be doing something. To there you go. I got, we, we, we could check you out there. <laughs> Amen. No, that's good. This, this, uh, I think that's all of our announcements. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to get started in the Word. And we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 17. Man, I got a long time to preach today. I'm just joking. <laughs> Blessed are the short winded, for they shall be invited back. Y'all ever heard of that? I, I, I won't wear you out. <laughs> but you know, I'm thankful that I was thinking about. Yesterday, just the last few days, even coming down to church, I was listening to some praise music this morning and just thinking how awesome it is to know that God is our Father. Amen? Amen. And that He loves us, He cares about us, He's got a plan for our life. And no matter what we go through in life, I mean, we got to admit this last year, a lot of things have been challenging to say the least. Raise your hand if you agree with that. I mean, you know, it's... Yeah, it's just been a crazy year. I mean, this time last year, if you had told me we would be going through some of the things we went through, we would probably have said, man, you're crazy, you know. And it has been a, a very challenging year, but I'm here to proclaim, I'm always looking for the pony in the room. I'm thankful that God is faithful, amen, amen. and that He walks us through things, and, and uh, he, he has a purpose for our life. He, we're not here by mistake. But I am glad that God is completely, extremely faithful no matter what we may go through. And He is our literally our Father. And we just have to talk to Him. I, I was on the phone uh, Christmas, you know, we didn't know what to do. My, I've got a sister that's 80 years old, so of course she, she lives with nephew and them. And we thought, man, just probably be safe over the holidays. And so we didn't get to go see my sister, but I called her uh, Friday afternoon. And she battles with a little, uh, little dementia. So, you know, she, we, we, I have, we, we talked and she, she'd asked me some of the questions a little bit over and over. But it, was, it blessed my heart talking to my sister and how that even though she battles with a little dementia, it, it's amazing to me how powerful God's Word is. You know, I call my sister and maybe if I called her 10 minutes later, she, she may remember that and she might not. But let me tell you something. When we're talking, she is quoting scriptures. And I'm like, man, that is the power in this book right here. Can I get a good amen? amen. I mean, she knew. She said, I remember when, when I was a kid and our daddy used to preach years ago. My dad did. And back when he was preaching, it was hard. They only had one old log truck to work out of and they would take the trailer off the log truck and drive the log truck to church. That, that's when you're poor. Can I get a good amen? I was talking to Mr. Marvin the other day and he said, when you talk about that log truck, it makes me think when I was a little boy, he said, we drove a duck truck to church. Amen. <laughs> so, you know, my point is a lot's changed in this year and it's been uncomfortable for us and 
Sad to say, as Americans in today's society, we're a little spoiled, amen. And so it's, it's really rocked our world because we're just used to doing whatever, whenever, and however. But when you think about Bible days and, and you read about Paul and, and in the book of Acts, you see back in the, the days when this Bible was written, golly, they were persecuted. Like me getting up here and preaching and saying God is good and everybody saying amen, it, I'm thankful. But there was a time that when you preached the gospel, your life was in danger. And so we, we, we are very blessed here. But I just want to remind you that God is in charge. Amen. Amen. And until God is through with you and I on this earth, we ain't going nowhere. Amen. Amen. And when he does say it's time for us to go to heaven, nothing we can do about it anyway. But it's, it's good to know that God is our Father and he placed us in the palm of his hand. So I just want to encourage you. Just make sure. That faith always prevails over fear. Let's say that together. Faith always prevails over fear. God has not given us a spirit of what? Spirit of fear. But a power of love and a sound mind. And we, he also gives us a brain. We need to be wise. Amen. We don't need to jump out from an 18 wheeler. We want to, I, and I encourage you to be very safe. And be careful. And. And protect others and yourself. But I am thankful that God never changes and He never fails. And that He is your, I'm just going to put it down in East Texas country boy terms. He is your daddy. Amen? Amen. And we should call Him Abba Father, which means our daddy. Can I get a good amen? amen. So I'm thankful that the Lord is our Father. He is our shepherd. And the Bible says that He watches over and protects us. We think of a sheep and, and how a shepherd takes care of the sheep. That's exactly how God watches over us, and He is the shepherd of our soul. If you have your Bible, though, my, my visit with my sister went good when I was thinking about God's Word and her, the things she was saying. She asked me, it was, it, was, it was a pretty interesting talk to her for 50 minutes, and she talked about the things we're going through now, and she said, you know, when is, when is the Lord supposed to be coming back? I said, we don't know exactly. We just know one day He's going to split that eastern sky. Yeah. And uh, man, we, we had a good visit. And what was funny, she could just spit those verses out. Can I get a good amen? amen. And we were talking, and, and she said something to me. She just, I enjoyed it. It's like I went to church, but I called my sister. <laughs> she said, Me and Jesus, we're tight, little brother. I said, Oh, I bet so. I believe that. You know, and she's always been an inspiration to me. Even Wednesday night, I preached on how she always got a hold of God's peace in her life when her husband passed away. And uh, I learned a lot from God giving her that peace. And she, she kind of was a great example to me about God can give us peace no matter what we're going through. And uh, she said, you know, she said something that was funny. She's a country to the bone like me, straight out of Beulah, amen. I got a shirt, somebody at church bought me one that said straight out of Beulah. But she said, you know, when I talk to the Lord, I just talk to Him like He's my best friend. I said, well, you're preaching now, Christa, my sister. <laughs> and uh, really, when we talk to the Lord, we should talk to Him like He's our best friend. Because He should be our best friend. Amen? Amen. And uh, she said, I just talk to Him. And uh, then she said something, you know, growing up in the country when you was poor, <laughs> the older generation, she's 29 years older than I am, but she had a little terminology. She said, I tell you what, I've known Jesus since I was a little girl. Boy, she was getting with it. And she said, when you got Jesus, she said, you got something in your pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And you know, when you grew up poor, it was a big deal to have something in your pocket. Amen. But it, it was interesting, man. She preached a pretty good sermon on Christmas uh, Christmas evening. So I enjoyed visiting with my sister. But it was funny how she kind of be trying to remember a few little things and then she just spit out a scripture and quote it word for word. Amen. God's word fire. But that's why when we go through hard times, it's a little late to try to get all this word in our heart at the moment that we need it. That's why we as Christians need to be making deposits. Can I get a good amen? Yeah. Of God's word in our heart throughout our entire walk with Christ. Because God's word is powerful. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17. I'm not sure. Are you going to try to put them up here? Look at Eric. He ain't messing around up there. He just jumped on that computer like a chicken on a June bug. And he said he's going to make it behave. <laughs> All right. 
<clears throat> Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. Let's see. Houston, we got a problem. I don't see my glasses. <laughs> they probably they probably they might be in there. Y'all say a prayer they're in there. I can I can see it either way, but Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. Look at that. That's pretty good. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. There's a couple of scriptures I probably need them, but we'll see if they're back there. And we're going to talk about the power of friends in our life. Did you know as a, as a Christian, as a church body, I'm impressed with our church. I'm going to say it one more time. I am impressed with our church. Even what, no matter what we face, we pull together. Can I get a good amen? amen. Just like our blood family, we should. Uh, sometimes that don't always happen, but I know I can attest to my family. We, we love each other. We may not see each other every day, but we're there for one another. As a church family, we're still blood family. Amen. It's just the blood of Christ. And when we pull together as a family, we do our best to pray. The Bible says, pray ye one for another. And it's our job to pray for our brothers and sisters in the Lord and our church and our brothers and sisters in Christ worldwide as far as that goes. But we need each other. And there's some scriptures that are... Pre Check my truck. Oh. <laughs> we did a truck clean out earlier. That should be in there somewhere. If not, that's okay. I might give $20 for a set of readers if anybody's got some on you. I'm just joking. <laughs> hey, people's getting them glasses off. <laughs> Who'll do 40, huh? <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. We're talking about friends and the power of, of friendships and the power of, of brotherhood and sisterhood. As we, when, when Our family is huge. Oh, Tracy, you got them 310 power ones, don't you? <laughs> oh, man, that's perfect. Look at that, Tracy, my buddy. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, we'll read it off the screen. It says, a friend is always loyal, and a brother is born to help when? In time of need. How many of you are thankful for good friends? And you know, friends, as you, if you live long enough, friends... God puts friends in your life, some of them for an entire lifetime. Sometimes God puts friends in your life for a season. But either way, it's still a good thing. And so I want you to, I want to encourage you today about who you hang out with. And make sure that we choose our friends wisely. Make sure that we not only have friends, but that we are a good friend. The Bible says we reap what we sow. Ooh, look at there. Give them to Tracy and he wanted $40 for them. I only used them one time. <laughs> we appreciate it. Oh, Tracy can actually read his Bible in the four year now. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 17, 17. A friend is always loyal and a brother is born to help in time of need. Now let's go over to Proverbs 18, verse 24. It says, they are, There are friends who destroy each other but a real friend sticks what? Closer than a brother. There are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. Aren't you thankful for God's gift of friends and people that we hang with? So I, but I want to challenge you this morning, and, and it's been on my heart, especially with all the you know crazy things going on. People do pull together when times get hard. Amen? And we want to have good friends. And I think about <laughs> how we are. Now Proverbs 18.24 says, But a real friend sticks closer than a brother. And us as Christians, our job as a church is to hold each other up and pray for one another. Can I get a good amen? And you know, when everything's going good, sometimes you don't really appreciate things when things are going good. Sometimes we have to go through some hard times and I don't like them. <laughs> Anybody love hard times? <laughs> Raise your hand, we'll let you preach. Amen. <laughs> but we don't love them. But I have to admit some of the hardest times in my life have been good for me. And I didn't like it at the time, but I wouldn't be who I am today 
had it not been for some hard times in life. And so when we go through hard times, it's our responsibility as Christians and as brothers and sisters in Christ to hold each other up. Can I get a good amen? amen. Here, here's something I wrote down. A good friend doesn't distance themselves in difficulty. Now that, that, that'll separate the men from the boys right there. And I've always heard that everybody has some few, uh, some dear friends. And usually it isn't as many as you think it is. And it, God bless you if you think you've got tons of friends. But when you hit hard times, you'll find. But God always works it out. See, He is your ultimate source. I can't fix all your problems. You can't fix all mine. Amen? But God can and God knows. But He does use people and put people in our path. And uh, my encouragement to you and myself is that we would be thank God for our friends and that we're also good friends to other people. Amen? Not just when times are going good. That's what I love about our church. We, we do our best to stick together. A good friend doesn't distance themselves in difficulty. Amen? Now, years ago I used to mess with a bunch of bucking bulls and I was kind of looking over these notes this morning and I, re I remember... One time we was having a bull riding at the house and a bull got a friend of mine down in the back pins and went to hook him. And how many of you know when a bull gets on you and starts hooking you, you got a problem. Amen. If you was worried about ten things and what you was going to have for supper that night, I promise you you don't care about all that at the time when a bull got you on the, on the ground, working you over and scooping you across the dirt. <laughs> And I remember my buddy, a bull got him down and was hooking him in the back pins. And a lot of people were just looking through the slats thinking, dang, I hope he gets up and runs here a little bit. <laughs> and you know, there's people that do that. How many of you ever been in life by, you've been getting hooked by life, so to speak. Maybe not a real bull, we hope. But it's just like life's giving you a hooking. And there's lots of people that'll look through the, the slats, isn't it? Oh man, I hope he gets up. <laughs> But there's always those people that God has put in your life that they'll hop the fence, amen? And they'll take a hook and wheel or a far year. Or they'll uh, take a buggy whip or a stick and get try to get that bull off of you. And I think about that. I'm thankful for good friends in life. I'm thankful for the way we as a church pull together. We have to have each other's back. Can I get a good amen? amen. A good friend doesn't distance himself in difficulty. I remember in... 2010 was a difficult year in my life. I went through some hard times, and man, it, it was a difficult, and I was discouraged at the time. Any of you ever been through a dark season in your life? And I think about our, our, our country right now. We're kind of in a dark season. I mean, it's kind of challenging. I mean, it's easy to get discouraged, but God is still on the throne. Amen. Amen. We still live in the greatest country out there. I, I'll be glad when this COVID deal leaves. I have my, I'm not too excited about who created the COVID and sent it our way. If you know what I mean. As far as I'm concerned, it was probably created in China. And I'm not, I don't really, I think they knew what was going on. That's just my opinion. But I'll be glad when, when we can get this behind us. Now, we are a great country. We got our problems. But I believe we're going to get this behind us, don't y'all? Amen. Yeah. And I tell you what, we'll be better, we'll be stronger than we were. But in the meantime, we got a lock arms. Can I get a good amen? Yeah. Just like soldiers. And, and, and during our challenging times as a church, it's, it's been challenging for us. But I'm very encouraged of our people. We love one another. Amen. Yeah. We care about each other. And that's, that's what we, as, as a body of Christ, that's our job. But I remember in 2010, I went through some hard times. How many of you ever heard the old phrase, somebody looking at you like a calf at a new gate? Yeah. Amen? <laughs> you ever seen a calf turn their head sideways like looking at a new gate? Man, I went through some hard times in my life. It was difficult and adversity. I, I would never choose to go through that again. Adversity on every side. And just when I think I got it all figured out and I kind of figured out where all the storms are coming from, I get a new, you know, some more information. It's like, golly, when is this storm going to end? But I'm so thankful that during those times, God provided me the perfect people to be by my side. Yeah. And, you know, my life moved on and some of them are still very close to me, but it's a, God will never let us down. He puts people in our life and we as Christians 
Let's make sure that we step up and not only want to have a friend. I mean, that's a blessing to have a good friend. Amen. We all got good friends. As far as I'm concerned, everybody in here, you're my friend. I care about it. Man, I pray for you. I love you. And, and, and the hundreds watch it. But we all need friends. We, we want to have a good friend. But I challenge you, let's make sure that we are a good friend to somebody else. The Bible says we reap what we sow. Can I get a good amen? amen? So if I'm never a good friend to anybody, it's hard for me to reap a harvest of heaven. But I want to make sure that I do my best. And I'm not perfect, but and I really do want to be a good friend and care about your needs. Can I get a good amen? amen. And so it, it, it's an important thing that not only we believe God to have good friends, and we need to be thankful for our friends. Our friends put up with our crazy self, amen? Yeah. Because none of us in here are perfect. I mean, your friends are like, whoo, boy, the Lord, Lord helped my prayer life when he gave you that friend over there. <laughs> Amen. But we're free. We, we need each other. And your strengths is probably going to be my weaknesses, my strengths. We, we, we complement each other. And even iron, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. God puts us together. And, you know, nobody gets along perfectly, but usually God's got somebody in your life trying to get some of the rough edges off. And if you're not careful, you miss the whole point. Ooh, everybody shout amen. And if you was here live, y'all of y'all watching my live, I can hardly hear with all these amens when I said that. <laughs> you could hear a mouse run across the back wall if you did. But it's true, right? Sometimes we, we get the rough edges off each other. We're good for one another. And I think about Moses in the Bible. And now God used people. I'm going to end up closing this thing out pretty quickly, but I'm going to do it with a story of how God used two little ladies to encourage my life one time. I've always got stories of different things of personal experiences, and maybe that's the reason I have been through hell on earth a little bit in my life, is because I don't just tell you something I read in the book. Can I get a good amen? Yeah. <laughs> it's one thing, we can all get on the internet and do a Google search on how to ride a bull. I wouldn't recommend it, amen, but if you want to. But there's going to come a time you can search Google on how to ride a bull. and We can go out here. There's some bucking bulls out here, so we could do a little clinic out there if anybody wanted to. I pulled up this morning and told Allison to pick a bull she wanted out. She said, I like that white one. I said, okay, we'll let you get on him after church. And everybody just watch. You know, she said, I'm good. <laughs> but you can do a Google search on how to ride a bull. We could get that mighty bucking machine out and I could get out there and show you what little I know. I could even get out on one of them to shoot and say, now this is kind of what you need to do and where you need to put your legs and feet and pull your bull rope and this is how you take your route. But ultimately, guess what's going to eventually happen? You're going to have to, if you're going to learn how to do it, you're going to have to do it. And it's just going to come from experience. So going through some hard times, just, uh, you know, it, it, it even in the midst of those hard times, I look back now and think, God used people in my life. And I want to make sure as Christians and those watching live today that we challenge ourselves, not just that we want a good friend, let's make a commitment to God to be a good friend to somebody else. Yeah. Can I get a good amen? That's one of your callings in life is to be there for people. Doesn't mean we have all the answers. Aren't you glad that we can't solve everything? Yeah. But you can just be there and encourage someone. Can I get a good amen? amen. And you never know. You've got to be available and, and willing at all times. As Moses in the Bible, remember when they were prevailing over the enemy and as long as Moses' hands were up in the air, if you study the Old Testament, the Bible says that Moses' hands became what? Tired or weary. And it didn't seem like nothing for us to raise both hands right now. Everybody raise both hands right now. All right? We're having a praise service out here, right? But now, what if we just said, raise all your hands up until about 1 o'clock? Everybody be like, oh, it's not too fun now, Pastor. It's not fun anymore. But when Moses had his hands up, they prevailed in battle. His arms got tired. The Bible says that Aaron and Hur came along beside Moses, and what did they do? They held his hands up. I don't care who you are. I don't care how tough you are. How tough you think you are, there's going to be times in your life that your arms are going to get tired. <laughs> and I promise you, 
When that happens to you, if you will trust God, He will put people in your life that will lift your hands up. Yeah. And when it happens, because it will happen to you, you will never forget it. You will be eternally grateful. Because God, basically God helped you, but He used one of His servants to help. Yeah. Can I get a good amen? amen. So I challenge you. Man, let's this, this, this be all we can be for God. And let's make sure that we have good friends, but let's make sure that we commit the Lord to the Lord to help us to be a good friend to other people in hard times. How many of you ever heard the story of Samson in the Bible? Samson was a strong guy. <laughs> Amen. Samson was strong. The Bible says that he was very strong. And I'm just going to give you a little history. I'm going to give you some homework. I'm not going to read it today. I won't, I won't put this scripture up here. But it's in Judges chapter 15. Read verse 11 through verse 17. And in a nutshell, the Israelites were held captive to the Philistines. And we, we also, that, that for many years, they were held captive to the Philistines. That's where David ended up fighting Goliath. Same group of people. So the Israelites were held captive to the Philistines. And God sent the Israelites a man named Samson who was very strong. And the Israelites, Samson was so strong, the Philistines basically got wind of it, and they were going to try to capture Samson. But sad to say, the Israelites tied their own man up. They, they tied up Samson and, and, and themselves with ropes. But the Bible says that Samson had so much strength that he ripped those ropes and just busted them off of it. I'm, a, I'm actually going to read a couple of these verses. You just follow along. Judges 15, verse 11 through 17. So 3,000 men of Judah went down to get Samson at the cave in the rock of Edom. They said to Samson, Don't you realize that this Philistines rule over us? What are you doing to us? Now the problem with the Israelites were is they had got into a, 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 a slave mentality. And they didn't, want, they didn't realize that God gave them Samson as a strong man. And he basically said, don't you realize they rule over us? And Samson re replied, I only did to them what they did to me. But the men of, men of Judah told him, we have come to tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines. All right, Samson said, but promise that you won't kill me yourselves. We will only tie you up and hand you over to the Philistines, they replied. We won't kill you. So they tied him up with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. As Samson arrived at Lehi, the, the Philistines came shouting in triumph, but the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon Samson, and he snapped the ropes on, on his arms as if they were burnt strands of flax. He was a strong man. And they fell from his wrist. And verse 15 says, then he found the jawbone of a recently killed donkey and he picked it up and killed 1,000 Philistines with it. Then Samson said, with the jawbone of a donkey, I've piled them in heaps. And with the jawbone of a donkey, I've killed 1,000 men. When he finished his boasting, he threw away the jawbone and the place was named Jawbone Hill. Can I get a good day there? Amen. I don't know if that was on the screen or not, but that was funny. <laughs> but now God used Samson for it gave him mighty strength. And the Israelites were kind of in a defeated mentality because they were going to just catch him and send him on back to the Philistines. They're like, dang, they rule over us. But I don't want us to, to settle for that. And, and Samson took the jawbone of the donkey and killed a thousand men. Can I get a good amen? amen. And so we, we, we want to make sure. We keep our eyes on the Lord and not get that mentality of being defeated. We can do how many things through Christ who strengthens us? Everything. And all, if you look it up in the Greek, Hebrew, or anything else, all means all. So whatever we go through or face, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But sometimes we have to have help. We're human. Just like Moses' hands got weak, God sends people to help us to get our hands up high. 
Amen. And you know, you think about I'm going to tell you all a funny story out of Beulah, Texas. Everybody say, I love my pastor. I love my pastor. My dad pastored the little Beulah church for a while. Actually, the church I pastored a few years ago. But many years ago, there was an, uh, an older preacher, if I'm not mistaken, his name was Brother Ashby. And he was on fire for God. He's the pastor that used to, I used to tell y'all, he would ride horseback. Everybody say horseback. horseback. I mean, it's fun to ride your horse out in the arena a few circles. But when that's your only form of transportation, it's, it's, he, he rode from Louisiana to Beulah, Texas to preach a revival. And on a horse. All, he said, on a horse? They didn't have any. And my mother would tell these stories when they were kids. So he rode a horse all the way from Louisiana. And I, I, my mother had a letter from Brother Ashby that was written to my family many years ago. And I don't know, I wish I could talk to my mother one more time and see where that letter is placed. But I haven't been able to get my hands on it. I read it many, many years ago. But he wrote a letter to Beulah Church thanking them for putting him up and they paid him with something to eat while he preached the revival. Hard time. He rides back and he lets them know that the water was cold, but he, he forded, he called it, I forded the Sabine River and it was 30 degrees. Grabbed the saddle horn and floated along beside my horse. That's what we preach, brother. <laughs> That's what to preach when you swim the Sabine River and it's below freezing. <clears throat> and uh, I tell you what, I know as a preacher, I better not ever whine. Amen. <clears throat> but, and if you do, if you think about somebody like that, you, you shut up real quick. But he went to Beulah. And he was the one, if y'all remember the story, he got so excited preaching at Beulah one time back in the, in the spring of the year. It obviously didn't have air conditioning. My mother would tell this story. She said, I was a little bitty girl. Brother Ashby would be preaching in the back window behind the stage of the church. It was a little bitty church. had a window. And the window was up. And all the windows were up because it was kind of cool, actually kind of warm. And so the kids would stay outside and look through the windows. And some of the people that still attend Beulah Church still are alive that remember standing looking through the window. And Brother Ashby got excited one Sunday and he was preaching and he got so happy he went and jumped out the back window. <laughs> but I mean, they could hear the little bitty building. I mean, it's maybe, maybe from here to there. He jumped out the back window, runs around the church, and comes in the back door and came right back up and kept preaching. Amen. <laughs> But he was just excited about his Jesus. Amen? Amen. He rode a horse all the way from Louisiana and swam the Sabine River to and fro. And he was excited. But one time, this is a funny story, preachers can make mistakes too, right? Everybody say, I love my pastor. Brother Ashby, I believe it was him. I could have it mixed up. It's probably been longer than I've been alive since it happened. <laughs> He got excited about preaching about Samson. And he said, in the King James, it says that Samson took the jawbone not of a donkey, but of an ass. And an ass is a donkey. But he got his word. Have y'all ever heard me get my tongue tangled? I'm the greatest. And he got up in church and he was excited. And he said, Samson took the jawbone of a donkey and whooped the... I'm going to leave it at that. We've laughed about that for years because he he was adamant in his preaching, but it, he got himself in a little bind. <laughs> but I, it embarrassed him really bad. <laughs> but it was funny in Beulah. We just laughed. We said, "Man, we hate to tell you, but that was that was pretty funny." <laughs> anyway, he got so excited about it. And every time I, I have to be careful when I think about Samson because I I get tickled and I think about brother. That brother was pumped up. He said he got the job on a donkey. And he got his words all mixed up. All right, but they did kill a thousand men with the job on of a donkey. And our challenge as believers is that we be a good friend to other people and be there for them, not just when times are going good. Amen. We don't want to be looking like a calf at a new gate when somebody's going through hell on earth. We want to be there for them. We don't have all the answers. My prayer is that we don't lean up on the fence and look through the slats of the six-foot panel and watch somebody get hooked. Amen? Because yeah. I'm telling you, life's going to give you a hook and it, sooner or later. But I'm, our job is to do our best to be there for other people. Amen? I, uh, 
A few years ago, when I was going through a difficult time in my life, one of many difficult times. <laughs> Anybody live long enough to have a difficult time or two or three or ten or twenty? I was going through a hard time in my life a few years ago in Austin. The young man that came here and, and, and preached with me one Sunday, uh, God put us together. <clears throat> he uh, He's a good kid, grew up in a church. His daddy was a, uh, a pastor. His, his grandfather was a, a pastor. So he kind of grew up in church and he had been through some challenging times and was kind of struggling. And I was going through a difficult, difficult time in my life a few years ago. And I was a part of a, an organization called ICANN, it's the International Cowboy Church Alliance Network. And I had my credentials through them and I was doing quite a bit of ministry. Doing some ministry, traveling around a little bit, doing feats of strength and it, it, eight or nine years ago. And uh, I was so discouraged and I had gone through a hard time with my daughter and I was right in the middle of that and had some tough situations at home and was worried about my daughter. And I was just so discouraged. And you ever notice when you're going through a hard time, the devil will start whispering in your ear. That's why you need friends. Somebody that can pop you every now and then and say, get you thinking right, brother, because we all get discouraged. Man, I was lower than a snake's belly. Anybody ever been there? Lower than a snake's belly. And I was had my ordination with them, still do to this day. And I was very discouraged. And I talked to Austin, and I said, man, I just feel like I could probably get out of the ministry of going through all these things. And I was worried about my daughter and praying for her. It was just a, a, a very, very, very stressful time. And it seems like that's when Satan kind of gets on your shoulders, starts pecking on you, right? Telling you lies and deceit. And, and when we go through that in different ways. I'm just telling you my story. And I was so discouraged. I thought, man, God, I, I just don't think the Lord could use me. I just, I got too much. It's just, just a hard time in my life. And so I, I, I was a little bit frustrated. Anybody ever had an attitude? Yeah. We've got nine people that are honest in here. Lord bless them. I had a little bit of an attitude, not at anybody. I was just, it was a tough time in life. And I thought, man, I, I just think I'm ready to throw in the towel in the ministry. And, I, and Austin, he said, why don't you just shut up? <laughs> hey, why don't you just shut up and do what God calls you to do? We need friends like that. And I was kind of having a pity party, I guess, and discouraged. And I said, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You know, I give God an ultimatum. Well, we really scare him, don't we? <laughs> well, I'll just show you what I'll do. So I give God this ultimatum. And I said, I'm going to call these people and I'm going to tell them what I'm going through with my situations at home, my daughter. And I just don't feel like I need to be doing this. And I can tell you what they're going to do. They're going to judge me. And when they do, I'm going to let them have it. Now, I didn't really mean that, but I was hurt, and I had a lot of pressure, and I didn't know what to do. And I said, I'm sure they're going to just tell me, oh, you don't need to be doing nothing. You know, you got all this stuff going on in your life. And so I called, and boy, I was tough. I said, yeah, <laughs> this is this shit. I called to talk to y'all. And Austin, we, he put his horse's feet down. I put down and down. We put it on the speaker phone, and I had my hammer cocked a little bit. Not, not bad. I was just hurting. Anybody ever been hurting? And you don't know what to do? Yeah. Raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all of a sudden, everybody here. I was just at a low point. I was hurting. And I got a hold of these two little old ladies. And I told them what I was going through and how discouraged I was. And I said, I just think I probably need to get out of the ministry. I want to just, just, I'm not going to do it anymore. And I, I, I just want y'all's thoughts, but... I just, I just need to, and I was kind of, I figured, boy, they're going to get on me. And when they do, boy, I'm going to defend myself. And those little ladies knocked a breath out of me. You know what they did? They said, well, we don't think Jesus is done, we. Yeah. yeah. I knew that in my heart. But some, you ever seen a little dog out in the road or something that's hurt? 
You get hit. You try to help the dog if you're not careful, it'll bite you. When you hurt, that's why you need friends. Amen. Oh, Austin said, just shut up and give them a call. <laughs> so I laid my speakerphone on the side of the deal, and I kind of had my little attitude. I didn't know what was going to happen. And as they began to talk to me, they said, we don't think the Lord's done with you. You'd be surprised what the Lord can do in your life in just a short time. And the guy that was kind of frustrated, ready to give him a piece of his mind, if he had to. Here I am, still got my shoe and chaps on. At that time, I was still working out. I, all of a sudden, something starts dropping on the ground. It starts getting, something's leaking. <laughs> and those little ladies said, you know, God's not done with you. And they said, if you don't mind, before we hang up, could we pray with you? And those two, <laughs> me and Austin talked about this last night. Because I was a little, I was, just didn't know what to do with my life. Never told this story before. But here I am before it's over. <laughs> I'm leaning over the tailgate of my truck with a speak, tr uh, old old speaker phone. Man, I'm making a mud hole, Amen. And those little ladies encouraged me in a tough time in my life. And so I hung up the phone and Austin said, See, I told you you should have shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but it was God's plan that he had those little ladies at the... I, I would listen to them. And he had them at the right place. They were so kind to me, so encouraging. They spoke into my life. They encouraged me and prayed for me. And everything, that, that day... The story of two little ladies changed the direction of my life. Now, God could have used a thousand ways. I'm just saying. God can use people. Amen? Amen. And my prayer is that it's you and I. <clears throat> I'm going to close with this. This would be like those little ladies. And this also don't be like the Israelites and tie up Samson. Amen? God was... Samson was there, a gift from God. They tied him up. <laughs> He used his strength. You know, God can help you. He'll meet you where you're at, no matter what. But I want to encourage you today. This, this, uh, this lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ every day, no matter when things are going great. Sad to say we don't think about it when everything's going great sometimes. Sometimes hard times challenge us, but they also get us out of our comfort zone. Amen? Amen. So think about those two little ladies at International Cowboy Church Alliance Network. Man, I called them and Man, they blessed me before it was over. I was, I was, I was, I was teared up, and God used them to to keep going on. I talked to a lady last night, probably one of the saddest phone calls I've ever had to be a part of. My wife, just listening, was was touched and and moved with compassion. One of my little customers, her husband, went home to be with the Lord. Not too long ago, in his middle or latter 80s. Talked to her last night. She was so upset, mainly because she couldn't see him in the last days. God, it broke my heart. She said, you know, I wasn't able to tell John to say our goodbyes. Couldn't talk to him over the phone. And she said, and somehow in this thing, he's always told me that he wanted me to wear it. Is wedding ring. And she said, he passed away in Houston. I have no way to contact him, and his wedding ring is gone. Man, that broke my heart. <laughs> and Allison said, I don't see how you have to handle those conversations. But I did it by the grace of God. We handled it. And so I just encouraged her and prayed with her. And uh, bless her heart, she's probably in her middle 80s herself, but very sharp. And, so we lifted her up and, and, and just encouraged her. And you know, I didn't have all the answers. But you know what? She'll never forget. And I told her, I said, I'm telling you what, we're praying for you. We're speaking peace over your life. Amen. And Jesus is going to take you through this hard time. Even though your heart's broken, he can heal broken hearts with a little time. Amen. Amen. So we always want to be available for every good work. The Bible says that we are, as Christians, should be available for every good work. So, did we learn anything today? We want to be encouragers. We don't want to tie up Samson, amen, like the Israelites did. 
We want to be like those two little ladies. Boy, I, I, had my, I, I, I had my fur stood up on my back a little bit, and God used the kindest two little ladies, and they tried to help my life. And look where I'm at today. Boy, they were a part of my journey. There's people in your life that can be accredited. It was God ultimately, but God used a lot of people to get you where you are today. Yeah. Aren't you glad He loves you? Let me ask you this. Aren't you glad He's smarter than you are? Amen. That ain't hard to do, but we're glad He is. Amen. So I encourage you today, be a friend to somebody else. Thank God for the friends you have, but be a friend to somebody else, no matter where you're at. There's hurting people on every corner. And God wants to use you and I to be His hands and feet. Head bowed and eyes closed. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, and you say, you know, I've never made the Lord... My Lord and Savior, personally, I want to do so today. I want to receive Christ. Or you could say I have, but I've gotten away from it a little bit. And Lord, I, I need to rededicate my life. Man, on either invitation, I'm going to pray this prayer with you. It's what I prayed when I accepted Christ in 1993. Oh God, I realize I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Jesus, I know you died on the cross for my sin. And I... Lord, I bow my knee before you and I open my heart up and ask you to come in and be my Lord and my Savior. Have your way in my life. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I give you my life and surrender it to you, Lord. I give you the reins of my life and may you have your way in my life from this day forward. In Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, I'm excited, but I'm not nearly as excited. The Bible says all angels in heaven rejoice when one person comes to know Him. Hey, we love y'all. Hope you enjoyed our, our message today. May, may, you, may you be a friend to somebody else. Amen. We love y'all. We'll see y'all Wednesday night. Continue to pray for all those that are in need. But God is on the throne and He is awesome. Amen. We love y'all. We'll see you Wednesday night.